my name is Scott Fong, and today I'm here to teach you about capacitor discharge welding for the purposes of field heat treating. Historically, using a pin welder has been a nuisance to almost anyone that's attempted to use it. Today, with this quick video, we're going to take this tool from being your worst enemy and make it your best friend. Before we start talking about the equipment we're going to use, we're going to talk about the pins we use for attaching our heaters and insulation. When you look at our heaters, you'll notice that there's actually some holes in the feeds. These are actually put there to allow for a 12-inch gauge pin to pass right through. We use pins 3 inches in length to allow for the heater to pass over it and for a couple inches of insulation as well. Pins are available in a number of materials. We most commonly use mild steel, but occasionally there are circumstances where stainless steel is required. If you look at these pins, you'll notice that the pin on the left has a sharp tip. The ones on the right are referred to as blunt point pins. The tip has been removed for safety to prevent unwanted puncture wounds, and these have pretty much become the industry standard for field heat treatment now. You'll notice that when the gun comes from the factory, that there's a footing attached. The footing serves two purposes. One, it helps keep your weld pin perpendicular to the workpiece, and two, it also helps set the tension for the spring to push that pin into the molten pool of metal. Once we remove the footing here shown on the left, you'll notice that we have the collet protector and collet protector insert and the B-collet still attached to the gun. There's no need to use a B-stop or button stop when you're using non-threaded fasteners. You'll notice on the head of the pin there is a little tiny nipple. This nipple is actually where the arc initiates when you pull the trigger on the gun. When the arc's initiated there's a little tiny pool of molten metal formed in the base metal and the gun with its spring helps push the head of the pin into that molten pool. On this gun, we've set the footing about 3 sixteenths of an inch below where the head of the pin is going to sit once we put it in there. The reason for this is to ensure that we, again, we have a proper amount of tension on our spring to push the head of that pin into the molten pool of metal that we discussed earlier. Now that we've prepared the base metal, attached the ground, and chosen the appropriate power setting on our pin welder, we're going to place the pin inside the gun push the gun down into the steel with the footing sitting nice and perpendicular and we're going to squeeze the trigger. If for some reason you choose not to use the footing and a lot of people don't, it's important that when you push the pin into the base metal that you're not bottoming out that spring. You only have to put a little bit of tension on it. Many times when the pin doesn't stick, we're tempted to turn off the power on the pin welder. Most times the pin doesn't stick simply because you haven't set a good ground or you haven't prepared the base metal properly. When it comes to pressure equipment, ASME Section 9 has given special accommodation for low energy capacitor discharge welding. Under QW289, a welding procedure specification is required to be written but is not required to be qualified. Under section QW389, it states that the welders do not need to be qualified for low energy capacitor discharge welding. 